back on our notes, remember these data types um, array. So we can create as many variables as we want with as many uh, types like the array. Um, and actually the way JavaScript can manipulate the um, contents of an HTML file is it basically looks at those, it can look at all of those things in HTML as objects themselves. Uh, if we back up to just to look at the body tag, well body is an object and then it has nodes, h1, div, ol, these are nodes, these are pieces, these are like branches of the body trunk. Uh, so we were able to manipulate one of the branches, one of the nodes within inside of the body. We referenced it via JavaScript and then we manipulated it, we changed it. That's uh, document object manipulation. DOM, D-O-M, you hear that all the time. DOM manipulation, document object model. We can make an, we can make a model of our document as objects. So with JavaScript we made a change. Five changes. And we saw that the, this code worked with each of them having a unique identifier. We made an object out of each of these items and then we changed it. Okay, that was pretty easy. Let me show you another way that this could be done. This is two ways to do the same thing. One isn't better than the other, but this was the long way. Let me show you a, a shorter way. I'm going to comment out this whole block that we wrote here. I'm going to deactivate that whole block. So here is where we want the multi-line comment. I'm going to comment out that whole chunk. Actually, uh, before I start my comments there, I'm going to also add uh, a comment here and say this method works with IDs on an HTML element. You see I have a comment and a comment because perhaps in the future I want to reactivate this code. If I reactivate this code and give myself this sentence, it would then think it's valid code and give you errors. So if I deactivate the multi-line comment, the single-line comment will still be in effect and leave it as a comment later on. So what I'm going to show you then is a way to do this without unique IDs. Sometimes we need, sometimes we can accomplish what we need with an ID and sometimes we have to accomplish it in different ways. Again, this is why JavaScript is the third level of difficulty because sometimes here we have trouble targeting elements of our HTML tree. Um, to further hit home with this, let's also back up and remove these unique identifiers. We're not, these, are not, these are no longer going to be unique elements. They're all going to be named li. We're not going to differentiate between them. With a unique ID, they are differentiated without that li looks like every other li. That list item looks like another list item. That should then uh, take it all back blank. That's what we want so far. So we're going to populate these list items in JavaScript in a different way. Same data, but in a different way. If you don't have this recourse, we have other ways to do it. And this is what I'm saying. This is the good and the bad. Some people think it's good, some people think it's bad. There's so many ways to do the same thing. Some people say, that's good. I have a lot of different ways that I can accomplish something. Some people say, that's bad. No, there's one true way. And I don't subscribe to that. I believe there are many ways to do something, and if it works for you, it works. Yes, there's arguments for efficiency and elegance and all of that. But if it works for you, it, it works. And if someone else tells you, do it this way, and it works, great. You have to decide what works for you. <coughs> the way we will do this is similar, but different. Next line, we'll say this method works with node manipulation. As I said, the node are like the branches. We're starting our body tag, and it has a branch of heading 1, and it has a branch of heading 2. It has a branch of 
OL, the list item. And then OL has sub-branches, sub-nodes. You can also think about it in terms of parent and child relationships. The parent here is the, uh, is the ordered list. The children are the list items. These list items are created inside of this element. These are children elements of this parent element. In turn, this is a child element of this parent element. This, in turn, is a child element of this parent element. These are siblings. These exist in the same level. This is not a child of this, just because it's lower, because these are inside of this. These are siblings, siblings, children, parent, children, parent. And that goes all the way up to HTML. All of them are then children of HTML. So I want to deal with this whole chunk of list items at once. I want to deal with all of those as one object. Previously, I was dealing with one list item at a time as an object. Now I want to deal all of them as one object. So, next line here, var. I'm going to use var lots of times. We create objects. We'll call this one L movies. All movies. This element for all my movies. Whereas I had an element for each movie. Here's an element for all the movies equals document object dot get elements by tag names tag name tag name singular semicolon so here's a little different be careful get elements plural up here we have get element singular by tag name capital N. Up there we said get an element, an individual element, by an, a unique ID. Here we seem to be saying get me a list of all tags using this tag. The tag is in quotes here in the parentheses li. With, without the, sorry about this, without the angle brackets, just li. So we're saying, look for elements that are marked as li, save that as an object, lmovies. All elements that have a list item will be swept up in this. In our purpose, this should work fine because we've only got one list item block. But if we had seven list item blocks, the top seven favorite action films, the top five horror films, the top seven uh, romantic films. All of them are still going to use li, and that would cause us problems, because then now it's too generic. All of them are using li's. This code might not work that well anymore. So again, different ways to do the same thing. Next line. Similar to what we've got here around text content, but we will say lmovies. And because we're dealing with multiple elements, the zero width element, the zero width list item dot text content equals my films, whatever film you want, the first film zero. Populated my first list item. I have a collection of all five of them. Let's refer to the first one, starting from zero. And then I put the zero with film. This is, I'm still going to need to specify each node here, and with other algorithms, we could traverse the node tree and all of that. That'll be for later. The second best film, then I'll say. Something else. Then L movies the third or the second index value, the third list item. Its text content will be set to from my array the um, second item um, one and so forth. So I'm starting to put then my my movies 
in the order that I'm choosing here from the database, from the array, into the slot. All my elements are held in one object, variable, but we have to say which of the elements in my object. This object holds every single list item on my screen. So if I added one more list item up here, the sixth best movie, that would automatically get swept up by the method get elements by ID, get stored in this, and I would have five, index five. So to complete this, I've got three and four, and then I need numbers um, three and two. So this one took up six lines of code. This one took up five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This took up ten lines of code just by that. Oh, it took up ten lines of code, and we have to have a unique identifier up here. So let's count five more lines. That took up 15 lines of code, so to speak, to accomplish the same thing that I did over here with six lines. I had to do it in a different way, however. So which is better than the other? Different factors to, to, to decide which is better. But two ways to do the same thing. Does that work for everyone? Anyone need a little help?
All right, so um, what we've done here then is written some JavaScript to change a property of an object. Well, we've been doing that kind of all day, objects and properties. But now we've kind of reached out beyond the confines of the script tag. We've reached in over to the body section of our document, and we've said, let's make an object out of some HTML. Then we'll change properties. Well, we can do this also with CSS. Let's touch on this and then we'll, we'll wrap up because we can use JavaScript to also manipulate CSS. So uh, in the um, we can do it either one of these ways with unique identifiers or with a you know generic kind of way. Um, we'll do it the the first way and then you can probably figure out the second way but we'll do it the same first way this method works with IDs on an HTML element I want to manipulate how heading one looks via JavaScript via CSS so let's go back to line 8 and give h1 a unique identifier we'll call this h1 style This heading one has a unique identifier. With that, then we can I, then we can reference it and manipulate it via JavaScript. Only this one. That's all we need for the moment. Back to the code at the bottom. We need to create an object. Then var. We'll call this um, my h1 equals document dot get element by id method quotes h1 style that basically then puts that object in memory into that variable so we can manipulate it just this one object because we said this one id we can do something like we did up here to manipulate every heading one or every heading two or every p tag so then we've got my h1 we've got that object we can look up in various websites or books of course a list of every property for every object once we have an HTML object it has a bunch of built-in properties one of the properties is dot style So we have the style property of that HTML object. When we were writing H uh, CSS inline on a tag, we had the attribute style. Remember that? Heading 1, style attribute equals background color red. Something similar, but now in the syntax of CSS. So we'll say dot color. We're about to then affect furthermore the color sub property of the style property of the uh, my h1 object equals quotes 
semicolon. I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the class, but what I like to do whenever there's pairs of things, I like to close the pairs before filling in the details. It's very easy for me to start writing stuff here, forget to close my pair and go on. It, it may seem like a simple thing, but I like to close my pairs like that, close the brackets, close the curly braces, close the quotes, and then fill in the detail. That way, don't forget to close the ending line, especially if it's a really long line. That might have happened way up here when we did this document right a long time ago. It had a closing parenthesis that some of us forgot. So if you close those pairs, you're less likely to forget to close them later. And then here, simply a color, red. Save it and run it. We've changed the color style of that HTML object with JavaScript. So JavaScript, again, can be used to write and edit and modify JavaScript. JavaScript can be used to write, modify, and edit HTML. JavaScript can be used to write, edit, and modify CSS. Very powerful language. And notice the way we do it. We create an object to represent that element, and then we either change properties or use methods. So uh, I think this is good for our day one intro to JavaScript. Next time we'll have more intro to JavaScript. We'll get more advanced. And then we'll start to proceed. We'll start to put these three separate languages together and start to get more advanced. Question? I'm going to put my code up in just a moment. Uh, general questions, anyone at this point? Okay, everyone, I'm not done with my lecture yet. Everyone, I'm not done with my lecture yet. So this is where we uh, are going to end up here. I'm going to put my code into the network folder in just a moment. I'm going to put my notes in there. I'm going to upload the videos, remember? We're going to do lab time until about 9.30. Uh, get all of this wrapped up. When we come back, we'll do more JavaScript. We'll start to get more complex, start to build it all together, and then start to work on this project, this goal that we have of this mobile app. So that's it for the moment, and we'll do it again next time.